thanks for watching. I know there are approximately 50 billion videos out right now for free, which is really cool that everybody's kind of getting together and making videos to help each other. Kind of a pleasant, unexpected surprise that I've been enjoying that people are so willing now to share their insight and their resources for free. Kind of gives me hope. But the reason I wanted to make this video is to do a little bit of education around trauma. I am a trauma therapist and I work with people that have uh, complex trauma, PTSD, acute trauma, runs the gamut. Um, but right now, what I think some of us are starting to figure out is that we're collectively experiencing trauma, and I've been saying this a lot on Facebook, like, this is collective trauma, because it is. So there's a concept of generational trauma, collective trauma, so that's when an entire group whether it's very small. So an example would be, um, so family members of uh, Jewish folks who either survived or did not survive the Holocaust. So they may be three generations out, but because of the way they were raised, they still have a sense of that trauma. So that's like a generational trauma. But what we're going through now is together and it's creating um, a sense of fight, flight, freeze, and in some new theories, the idea of fawn. So fawning is the idea of trying to take care of everyone else, make sure everybody's okay, like really just going above and beyond to help everyone else because you don't feel in control. Um, and it's a nervous system response. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about is how to harness uh, our nervous systems right now, hack them a little bit. I don't know right the, the right word for that, but um, so during the acute stages of stress and trauma, which is what we're experiencing right now, um, we're stuck at home. Um, we're hearing about terrible things every day, depending on how much you're going online, like maybe every hour or minute it's changing. Um, but you might be noticing some things. You might be noticing that you feel um, a lot of tension in your body. You might be noticing that you are unable to sleep. You might be noticing that you're having nightmares. Um, you might be noticing that you're just frozen and you feel like you can't get off of the couch. You might be resorting to stress eating. You might be unable to eat. These are all normal responses to trauma. So the first thing that I've been talking to all my clients and friends about is to give yourself a little bit of a break right now. So being really gentle, that's a really important first step. Realizing that, yeah, this really sucks and we can't really control too much about it. We can stay home, we can do the things that the CDC tells us to do, but there is that sense of uncertainty. So anxiety is literally the sense of uncertainty. Um, but because trauma, once it gets past that stage of it just being stress or acute stress, it is all in the nervous system and the brain. Um, so I guess an easy way to describe this is with the two kind of branches of the nervous system. We've got the sympathetic, which is responsible for, um, in like this trauma setting, it's like the fight or flight, but it's also things like preparing us to move, preparing for action. Um, so some of the things that can happen with that when it's an overload is our digestive system will shut down a little bit because the reason we have that is to fight or run or do what we need to do. So in those times we wouldn't want to waste our energy digesting. So if you notice like a lot of digestive issues, that's your sympathetic nervous system. Um, it also tenses up our muscles so that we could run, fight, do what we need to do. That's why neck and shoulders are probably tight, your chest is probably tight, even if you're sitting around doing nothing. Um, headaches, if you, even if you're not aware of it, even if you're just sitting more than usual or sitting in different ways, your neck muscles will get tight, create these patterns of tension in the head so you end up with headaches. And then for a lot of us that already have anxiety, we're reading about the symptoms of this virus and we're hearing that some of the symptoms are like gastrointestinal or their headaches and then that starts a spiral 
of worry, which we don't need that either. But on the other side of that, we've got the parasympathetic nervous system. So that is the branch of the nervous system in charge of rest, digesting food, relaxing the muscles, um, lowering our blood pressure, lowering our heart rate. So right now, what we want is a balance of this because we don't want to just be a blob on the couch with the parasympathetic response where we don't care about anything because that's actually like a trauma response too, to just be you know, kind of laying around like, I don't care what happens. And if that's where you're at, that's okay. Like give yourself a break. Um, but some things you can do to regulate those things of which there are, there are many, um, so some easy ones, um, breathing, breathing's like the easiest one. Um, just check in with yourself right now. Were you holding your breath? I kind of was cause I was talking. Um, I've been holding my breath a lot even though I've been a yoga teacher for like a billion years, I've been doing this for a while. It's kind of like a bracing, like you're bracing yourself. So what you can do is just take a little bit of time, drop your shoulders down, wiggle them out if you have to, maybe move your head around, definitely kind of like move your head around throughout the day, whether it's just kind of like dropping the ear to one side, then the other side, just kind of stretching the neck, definitely be doing that. But um, deeper breaths, preferable, um, I would say in and out through the nose. I would not recommend taking the deepest, biggest inhales of your life. Um, it's gonna be a really good way for you to feel like you're hyperventilating or you can't breathe. So it's a smooth and steady inhale through the nose and a smooth and steady exhale through the nose. Um, the thing that's going to help you get that parasympathetic response is to lengthen your exhale. So maybe you count it out. So maybe your inhale is only a short, quick count of three. See if you can get your exhale to a count of four, five, six. Super duper simple. So that's one way to do it. I have a billion and one ways you could breathe, but I think that's the easiest one. Um, I recommend setting timers on your phones because they're in your hands. Like, you know they are. <laughs> or you have an Apple Watch or you have something. You have something right now that you're glued to right now. Set the reminders, remind yourself to breathe um, every few hours. Maybe it's five breaths, whatever. If you have an Apple Watch, Apple Watch has this awesome one that I've been using like a billion times a day lately, the Breathe app. Um, it creates a little like graphic of like a, I don't know what it is. It's like a ball that like expands on the inhale and then it contracts on the exhale. You can go into your settings on your iPhone and you can change the length of the inhale and exhale. So if it's too fast for you, if it's too slow for you, you can change the counts. So that's breath. Um, grounding is another big one. And this is for people with PTSD already. So those of us with a history of trauma, my God, like this is a million times worse than I think it might be for somebody that's got a little bit more resilience built in, which is again, this is not your fault first of all. So if you are experiencing more trauma because you have a history of trauma, take it easy on yourself. Some people had more privileges growing up. They had, you know, more tools available to them. So if that's not you right now, it's fine. This is still a time where you can work on these things and build these skills. Um, grounding, super important. Um, checking in with all of your senses. There's a five, four, three, two, one grounding exercise, which is, it's okay. It's good because it gets you to slow down. I only say it's okay because I don't like it. <laughs> so for that one, it's five things you can see. So you look around in your mind, you name five things you can see. So it's, and it's take a little time to like focus on them. So I have like a billion plants in my office. So I could look at like five different plants and really notice them. Um, four things you can hear. That gets a little trickier. Um, so like right now, I don't hear very many things. I won't make you watch while I try to pick out four things. But what that does is it gets you to start really focusing in the moment. So four things you can hear, uh, three things you can smell, which good luck with that if you've got seasonal allergies, so just do your best. Um, two things you can taste, which that one could be kind of gross because you're just like tasting the inside of your mouth, but do it anyway. Just just laugh along with it if you need to. Like, even if you can't name it, you're like, oh, I just brush my teeth, mm, I some water, mm, I don't know what I taste, but just kind of noticing that. And then one thing you can touch, so like I have a soft blanket, so 
like, ah, oh, soft blanket. Um, quick and easy one, just go through all the five senses. Done. Um, so highly recommend doing that. Um, another really good one is wherever you're sitting or standing, noticing every part of your body that is touching the chair. If you're standing, noticing every part of the foot that's touching the floor. That's it. Do that for as long as you can. Um, take in like every sensation of the shoulders, the back, if your head touches the chair, um, your sitting bones on the chair, your legs, everything. And just notice that for a little bit. But I'll make a few more of these um, because I have a lot to talk about. So just FYI, yeah, if you notice that you're just stuck to the couch, if you notice you're having panic attacks, um, all these things, you're experiencing trauma. But the good news is by doing these things now to regulate your nervous system, you can actively be avoiding, um, you could possibly, <laughs> it's hard to tell because this is a lot, you could, you could be av avoiding some future symptoms um, of either acute stress disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, I think we'll find that a lot of people come out of this with some new anxiety that they didn't have before. So this is just a reminder, go easy on yourself, rest when you need to rest, your body needs rest right now, even if you do feel like you're just sitting around, but also get some movement in um, when you're experiencing something traumatic like this, we need some movement. It doesn't have to be like the most intense movement of your life, now's not the time, um, but get out, take walks when the weather's nice, um, find some yoga on YouTube that a lot of the yoga studios are doing free things right now. It doesn't have to be a long time either, maybe just 15 minutes of something every day. Um, you know what, maybe even just say, I'm going to do five minutes of something every day. If you do those five minutes, that's awesome. But you'll probably also notice that there are certain days where you do more than five and that's good too. So I'm going to say set the bar a little low um, because now, now's not the time. <laughs> uh, if you do decide to try some new things now and it's helpful, that's great. But my God, like this rhetoric going around of like, learn a new language and clean your whole house and do all of these amazing things, write the next great novel. Like, oh my God, like you are going through enough. If those are things that help you and you want to do those things and they help you relieve stress, do it. But my goodness, like don't buy into the productivity thing. Like that's already something that ruins a, a lot of joy for most of us in the first place. So for that to be popping in right now, it ain't the time. This is a time to rest, reflect, figure out what do you need from moment to moment. This isn't the time to beat yourself up because you maybe put on a few pounds. Like, we're all gonna either gain a few pounds or we're gonna lose a few pounds because we can't eat. And don't don't glorify the, the ones that lose a few because they can't eat because that's not, that's not a fun place to be either. Um, so don't buy into those ideals of like productivity uh, for your worth, don't buy into those ideals of losing weight or being thinner as, you know, intensifying your worth, like now is, now is not the time. And if you notice these messages coming in through your social media, snooze them, delete them, unfollow, now is not the time either. Um, I recommend doing kind of a, an inventory of your, what you're taking in. Everybody's been saying it and I, I agree. Choose like one news source, a reliable one. My goodness, there's a lot of crap going around right now. CDC, listen to the CDC. Like I've been hearing a few people saying like, oh, well, I don't wanna listen to the CDC. I don't, I don't know them, like they, what's in it for? No, <laughs> no, also no. CDC, World Health Organization, um, so unbiased news sources, my goodness, you guys. <laughs> Don't drink bleach. <laughs> like, don't do any other things that are going around. Don't try to be a hero. Don't say, I'm just gonna take a bunch of echinacea and then go outside. Like, okay, like, I get it. Like, I teach yoga. I do weird stuff. Like, I take supplements. Now is not the time. <laughs> Science is our friend. So yeah, so choosing one news source, checking in with it, doing that inventory of your social media, looking at, it might be you need to, 
just unfollow some friends for a while because if they are panicking and some of us are verbal processors or they're, we're putting it out on social media, um, it it's not something we've asked for. We didn't give consent to that. So it just flies into our eyes and then into our brains. So we want to be helpful to each other, but there are going to be certain people where you, you might want to mute them for a while and maybe check in with them if you're really worried about them. Just like send them a text and be like, hey, what's going on? Like, you doing okay? That's fine. But you got, yeah, check in with that. Check in who's putting out things that are like really alarmist. Maybe mute them. People that are like resharing like every news story. Like, we get it. It's happening. <laughs> so that's it for now. I think this was pretty long. I could have gone on for like an hour, but I'll do more videos. So if you found this helpful, let me know wherever I'm dropping these down. Probably like Facebook. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what day it is. Um, yeah, just let me know if there's certain things that you're struggling with. Um, this is not a substitute for therapy, by the way. I'm not being your therapist right now. Um, if you're feeling it right now, you're really feeling it, you don't have a therapist, um, and you're worried about your job, if you're not, we're out here, man. Like, we're out here, we're all doing online therapy, um, going to psychology today, looking for a therapist. If you have insurance, take your insurance, um, making sure that they cover teletherapy. But then if, you're, if you've lost a job or you've, your hours got lowered, open path. Go to open path. Um, they're they're up and running right now um it is sliding scale therapy so it's on a scale of thirty dollars to sixty dollars so even if you're very low income right now my goodness like prioritize your mental health figure out and i know this sounds so privileged of me so please don't take it that way but like figure out how to make thirty dollars um work because that could be your life raft right now right like Maybe there's a $30 somewhere else. <laughs> I hate saying that. I know it's so bad. But just, yeah, just kind of keeping yourself above water for $30. Like maybe you do it twice a month, something like that. Just, yeah, just take care of yourself. Um, there are other options too that are free. Community mental health has gone to teletherapy in most cases too. So depending on what side of town you're on in Columbus, um, Southeast, Northeast, North Central, stuff like that. Um, they do have teletherapy um, and it's gonna be more affordable so yeah let me know um, feel free to message me wherever you're seeing this if you got any questions I'll be doing some stuff on uh, more stuff on stress management sleep hygiene or sleeps jacked up makes sense um, more breathing exercises maybe some yoga <laughs> like I don't know I don't have space to do like full yoga thing maybe I'll do like chair yoga but yeah Take care of yourself.